hello and welcome back. Today we're starting a new unit on triangle. You're going to learn all kinds of cool things about triangles. Today specifically we're talking about the bisectors of triangles. And let's review first what a perpendicular bisector is. A perpendicular bisector of a segment intersects a segment at its midpoint and at a 90 degree angle. So it makes like a perfect T, perfect T. That's a perpendicular bisector. And we have a perpendicular bisector theorem, which says if a point is on a perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the end points of the segment. And I'll show you what that means. It's saying if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, so let's say we're talking about C, and this blue line here, they're saying that's a perpendicular bisector because we've got these two congruent marks here, which means it splits the segment in half. And we've got that little box there that says it's at a 90 degree angle. So C is on the perpendicular bisector. If C is on the perpendicular bisector, then what we know is that C is equidistant to the end points. So these segments, CA is congruent to CB. Now, we can look at this from a different perspective. We can say if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then we know it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So let's look at this one. So here's E, and they're telling us with these two congruent markings that E is equidistant from B and A. If it's equidistant from B and A, then we know that where it crosses this line this is the perpendicular bisector of a B. Cool. Okay, let's try this. Um, let's try this out some practical ways. So it says, what is the measure of X? Well, what information do we have right now? We know that this line here is a perpendicular bisector of AB because of the congruent markings and the 90 degree angle signal symbol. So if that's the case, then we know that EB is congruent to EA, which means that X equals eight, because it's the same measure as EB. Let's try one that's a little bit more complicated. What is the measure of X or the value of X? Well, again, we know we have a perpendicular bisector here because we've got the congruent markings and the right angle symbol, which means that this segment is congruent to this segment. If they're congruent, they're equal to each other, so we'll set them equal to each other. 2x plus 3 equals hmm, 4, 4x minus 7. Now we just have to solve for x. So we could subtract 2x from both sides. So we get 2x minus 7 equals 3. Add 7 to both sides. So 2x equals 10. So x equals 5. Cool. So another thing we're going to learn about are called points of concurrency. Concurrency. And a, a point of concurrency is where three or more lines <clears throat> intersect in one place. And there's this cool thing that if you look at every triangle, every triangle, I'll write that, whoops, every, there's three angle bisectors. There's three medians, there's three perpendicular bisectors, and there's three altitudes in every triangle. And in every triangle, 
Each of the three angle bisectors meet at one point. All the medians meet at one point. All the perpendicular bisectors look at one point and same with the altitudes. So those are all called points of concurrency. And right now we're gonna look at the point of concurrency associated with perpendicular bisectors. So the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that's called the circumcenter. Okay, so we have all these perpendicular bisectors, which are here. So this line is the perpendicular bisector of EK, and this line is the perpendicular bisector of EM, and this line is the perpendicular bisector of MK. And they all meet in the middle. And that middle is called the circumcenter. And the cool thing about the circumcenter is that if I draw a line from the circumcenter to each of the vertices, and I'm not very good at this on the iPad, so please bear with me, but from the, that circumcenter to each of the vertices of the triangle, those are all congruent segments. So that is called the circumcenter theorem. Let's put that into practice over here. So it says, if P is the circumcenter of ABD, so whoops, we need to move P over here. <laughs> List any segments that are congruent to the given segment. So the first one is BR, BR. So we're looking for something congruent to BR. Well, we're dealing with all kinds of perpendicular bisectors. So if this is a perpendicular bisector, that means that BR is congruent to AR. Okay, and that means that AS is congruent to CS. And then BP, mm, this is the cool one, BP meets at the circumcenter, which means it's the same as that line, AP and CP. So those are perpendicular bisectors in a triangle, which all meet at the circumcenter. Now we're gonna flip over on the back and we're going to look at angle bisectors. So in the first part of this lesson, we were looking at the perpendicular bisectors inside of a triangle. Now we're gonna talk about the angle bisectors inside a triangle. And just to review, an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles, cuts it right in half. And we know a lot of things about this. It creates some relationship. So if we have a point, let's say we're talking about point F and it's on the interior of an angle and it's on the angle bisector, then we know that it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. Let's talk about measuring from an inside line to the sides of an angle for just a second. In order to measure from a point to the sides, we have to find where that point meets the angle, the outside of it, at a right angle. It has to be perpendicular and that's how we measure the distance. So if F is on the angle bisector, we know that F to D is the same distance as F to E. And just like we did on the front, we can look at that from a different perspective. And we can say, this is the converse, that if a point is in the interior of an angle, and if it's equidistant from the sides of the angle, then we know it's on the bisector of the angle. So let's put, the, put this into practice. And this first one says, what is the measure of TK? Let's see what information we have first. So here's TK. K is this guy right here. And if you zoom in real close, look at this. There's, there's two um, 
congruent markings in that angle. So the angle has been cut in half. If the angle has been cut in half, then we know that VK is the angle bisector. If VK is the angle bisector, that means TK and MK are congruent. So we can use that information to solve for x. We can say 2x plus 1 equals 3x minus 8. Solve for x. Subtract 2x from both sides. So we get 1 equals, let's see, x minus 8. So x equals 9. Are we done? No, because they didn't want the value of x. They wanted the measure of tk. Uh, TK. So we've got to take that 9 and plug it back in here. So 3 times 9 minus 8. So 3 times 9 is 27. Subtract 8 from that, we get 19. So the measure of TK we know is 19. Let's try another one. What is the measure of EWL? EWL is this angle right here. And again, let's look at what information they've told us. Well, we've got some congruent markings here. And so those congruent markings tell us that L is on a line that's equidistant from the sides of the angle. If it's equidistant from the sides of the angle, we know that it's on the angle bisector. If it's on the angle bisector, we know that these two angles are congruent, so we can set them congruent to each other, set them equal to each other. 7x plus 5 equals 3x plus 21. It's all for x. So we get 4x plus 5 equals 21. Subtract 5 from both sides, and we've got 4x equals 16, so x equals 4. Are we done? No. We need to find the actual measure of EWL, so that 4 has to go up into the x position. So 7 times 4 plus 5. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 5 is 33. So we know that EWL is 33 degrees. Now on the front, we learned that when all the perpendicular bisectors inside a triangle come together, they come together what we call the circumcenter. Well, we have another relationship here, and this is when all of the angle bisectors come together. They come together in what we call the in-center. So the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point called the in center, which is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Just like um, on the angle bisector, any point is equal equidistant from the angles, anything on the in center is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So let's look at what this uh, looks like into, in practice. For this um, triangle GHY, we're going to find the following measures. Now it says that U is the in-center, U is the in-center, which means if U is the in-center, it is automatically on all of the angle bisectors. So all of these guys automatically become angle bisectors. If those are all angle bisectors and U is the in-center, then we know that U is equidistant to the sides of the triangle. So now we know all kinds of things. So we need to find the measure of angle UHP. UHP, that's up here. Well, if this angle is 21, well then UHP is also 21 degrees because it's the angle bisector. And then it wants us to find UM, okay, which we know is the same as UP, so that's five. And it wants us to find, finally, UGM, UGM, which is right here. Well, if this is 28, we have to just look on the other side, UGM, also 28 degrees. Lots of cool relationships that happen inside of triangles. Thanks for being here.